All right, everybody, we're going to be watching Joe Warren on your left play against Brad Mendez here. Uh, we're going to get your, your pairings here so you guys can submit your brackets. It's Joe Warren versus Brad Mendez, and then Mike Cruz versus uh, Shane Kelly. See the players look at their opening hands here. Uh, we, we got updates. I don't know how much we were able to relay to you guys. It was hard for me to keep track of the game we were watching and the updates from all the other ones, but I promise you there are some absolutely insane things going on in every match at, uh, in, in this tournament so far. Um, it's a, a really good magic, and, and we're excited to bring you two different uh, type of decks here. Joe is the other blue player at the table. Uh, along with Shane, and, and obviously that color was deep. Uh, Brad just is leading off of the Rofellos here on turn two, so he's fixing to ramp his mana up pretty quick. Um, that's one he, he told me one of his primary strategies. Looks um, like a, a counterspell here. I'm not even sure which one. Uh, Joe's on to his turn. Is that a... What, is, what does that land there? Oh, Maze of Ith on the on the field for Joe. Cold Steel Heart for Brad. Get their votes in. Uh, and you guys are able to get your votes in here until the close of this first game. I get them in uh, via message to the GameCore Facebook page. Yeah, All right. I see a throw in the last troll here from Brad. It's not like Joe can counter that one. Uh, is that impulse? Looks like that is. And let me get the life totals updated for you guys. Uh, both players here mulliganed actually down to six. Still sitting at 20 life apiece, so no reason to update life totals yet. Suspended Ancestral Visions here for Joe. No other way to cast that card, and Joe's also going to Oblivion Ring, the acceleration here from Brad. Give him enough tempo just to let that Ancestral Visions resolve and, and make up some of that card advantage back. Run the last troll is incredibly good at fighting through a maze of it here. And we'll have four upkeeps before Joe gets to draw any cards off that visions. Not enough to kill Joe with the uh, Thrun alone. But we do... We would need one more creature on the board from Brad in order to get any additional damage through since the maze will be able to shut down, let's say, the treetop village should that get animated. So really no reason for Brad to do that here. We'll see if he, he gets trapped into it with nothing else to do. Sometimes you just give the opponent the opportunity to make the mistake. Uh, Sakura Tribe Elder, though, hits the board for Brad, so he's going to further his ramp. And 
And so 16 to 20 now is the life totals. Joe's pretty quick with his turn. Uh, just playing draw go here. Sent it right back over to Brad, who's going to crack the Sakura tri at the end of turn. Get his third color here. Now he's got blue as well. Maybe the tempo plan and, and Thrun will just simply be enough. Hexproof is indeed seemingly broken in every format. Obviously, clearly not broken in cube with the amount of board sweeps, everything along those lines, but it's certainly putting in uh, quite a bit of work and, and likely annoying Joe quite a bit here. All the islands in this cube buckets? Yeah. Classic whooper. Brad's going to flip his mocks up. Oracle of Moldiah on the board. Now Brad's going to get some extra land draws but and knock Joe down to 12. Joe needs two more turns in order to resolve his ancestral visions and we'll see if Sun Titan can bide him some time. Um, is there a, a target in there for him? Nope. But he gets to leave the maze up so now he's got a blocker for Thrun. Admittedly Thrun, Thrun can regenerate but Lotus Cobra on top for Brad so plenty of explosive draw possibilities from Brad. Uh, kind of drawing all that ex explosive early game ramp now late but it looks like I see an Avenger of Zendikar in his hand so let's see what he's able to do with an Avenger and a pernicious deed for the time being very strong card there by Brad If I was Brad, I would hope for maybe a little more aggression there. Something that can directly deal with the Sun Titan right now. Um, the, the value of like a, I mean, a Shriek Maw, I know we saw that last round, so that couldn't have been the play. Any sort of removal spell, really. Doom Blade, uh, go for the throat, was in AJ's deck as well. Kind of taking some outs away from Brad out of the cube. Brad's deck must be very light on blue. Considering both Shane and Joe here have made it prime colors and it just looked so open in this draft. Exactly is going on here. I believe it is Joe's turn. We see Treetop Village get activated to join the blocking team. And no reason to assign damage to Thrun. Just assign it to the treetop village, and then we will regenerate Thrun using the village and the uh, the Mox here. And Joe passes his turn back over to Brad. One turn left until he gets to resolve his ancestral visions. As Brad draws his Lotus Cobra, and. I don't know what it is he just revealed there. I 
And here's the Avenger of Zendikar. 601 plants will enter the battlefield on Brad's side. He might be long lost. We'll see if your guys' elected representative here, Brad Mendez, is able to pull out this game one against Joe Warren in his blue-white control deck. Joe finally resolved his ancestral visions, drew a bunch of cards here. We'll see what he's able to do with them. Board sweep would be a start. Not sure which, what, if any of them, Joe has in his deck, but... Pristine Talisman for the time being. Help gain him some life. Uh, stem the bleeding a little bit. See if Brad can hit double land off the top of his deck with Oracle. He's got a Crucible of Worlds. I don't can't see his graveyard at all to know if there's any lands in there to make it relevant. Uh, well, we will clearly be finding out next turn, it looks like. And if anybody knows what that card is, I can't place it for the life of me. But it's good enough to eat a cryptic command by the looks of things. He's a martial coup. Joe? And he has an upheaval. All right, well, Upheaval and Martial Coup are the cards that Joe Warren is looking for here, uh, the cards that will really help him out quite a bit. Um, he has a lot more busting cards than Strings of the Steel Wind that will help. Strings of the Steel Wind, um, Angel of Serenity would be pretty boss. Yeah, Angel of Serenity is in Joe's deck as well. Detention Sphere. Yeah, we can Detention Sphere away that uh, all the tokens, possibly the Avenger. Uh, Brad, I know, has some land-based LD spells, so if he's able to draw his Tectonic Edge, he's really going to be able to attack Joe's mana base. Um, you know, draw Crucible, reveal, reveal Tectonic Edge. Um, yeah, he has Sinkhole as well. So if he reveals Tectonic Edge, he gets to play it, use it, play it, use it. Are you talking about Joe has it? No, Brad has Tectonic Edge, so he'll get to play his... Crucible of Worlds, and then oh, Tech Edge. Crucible. Yeah, so he's got Crucible and Tech Edge. So if he's able to get that online, Joe's mana is going to be made pretty quick work of. Uh, as we do have a life total update here. Uh, Joe's down to 13, up to 13. Oh, the, the Pristine Talisman gained him one. Just say I don't see any life gain out there. And Lotus Cobra is going to chump black. And Detention Sphere is going to eat up all those Avenger of Zendikar tokens. So uh, the landfall trigger on the Avenger is just about worthless. And now he's merely a creature smaller uh, than uh, Sun Titan in combat. So uh, if Brad wants to do any attacking, Joe's going to get his Delver to chump block, reanimate it with using the Sun Titan. Finally, Brad's going to get to play some land off of the top of his deck with his Oracle. Uh, in comes an Overgrown Tomb. Not sure whether or not there will be any life paid here for that. Looks like Brad's getting caught up on life total too this turn. Looks like I think he actually paid two. Yeah. 
That is correct. Brad drops to 18. He's going to crack pernicious deed. All right, so the board minus Thrun is going to die here. Um, Avenger is actually going to stick around, uh, or uh, more Oracle of Moldiah is going to die, and uh, Joe's going to take Avenger of Zendikar damage, but it's going to get Maze of Ift. Looks like Maze actually might have been tapped here because I do have uh, Joe falling to nine. Hero of Blade Hold for Joe. It's one of his last hopes of being able to stabilize. Joe drops to five. This game, uh, the Trigon Predator here for Brad. Not really uh, much of a threat to anything Joe's planning to do, especially not any longer after the pernicious deed. Brad's deciding on Crucible of Worlds, decides against it. It's his only card in hand, his opponent knows about it. I feel like I would likely windmill slam. Joe's thinking about attacking here. I think he drew upheaval. So if he's in a not dying mood, he's going to want to use that on his opponent's turn. Assuming it is an instant, not a card I've played with much. is a sorcery, so he'll have to do it on his turn, and he does. Restart the game. Joe is going to sit at five. <laughs> some insanity going on, some flash photography. Yeah, that is not a concession you're seeing. That is the resolution of a spell. <laughs> Crazy as that may seem. Um, Joe's got a Delver. Where is that right about now? I feel like I might have paid two for that. Can you imagine a Natural flip Delver next turn. Start a clock. Mana, whatever, mana bonds. He just ripped exploration. Are you joking? So he, he drew exploration on the turn. Yeah, so... Well, mana bonds cost one, and you can play your, your mana lands you want, but then you have to discard your hand. And so you could, like, uh, I guess go under that. Well, either way, Brad's going to be getting two lands per turn. Joe's going to lay the Maze of Ith down again. Give himself some protection. Circle of Protection, Treetop Village. And a Crucible of Worlds hits the board for Brad. Next turn, I think we'll be seeing Oracle of Moldaya for Brad. It'll likely just be, I mean, that upheaval, it, Joe had to go for it, but it really just looks like it set Brad up with a smaller clock, 
and an even better ramp plan. So Joe had no choice, but it was a little... both discard whatever excess cards. Had, right. So, I mean, it got it, rid of it, some of Brad's lands, and it kept him from dying. <laughs> but, and, and he had to draw exploration in order for this to be such, yeah, such a one-sided affair. Um, but clearly Joe is, is reeling a little bit how, you know, I'm not sure how he's going to be able to crawl back into this one. Well, he's got a Vendillion click for starters. Might have been better to, to rip the Thren from the opponent's hand first. Not always an option. Couldn't afford to take three from the um, Treetop Village, so he had to play the Maze. But at least there will be a blocker here for Joe. Brad shows... This is still the first game, Wooper. Uh, we've got Vorpede, Trigon Predator, Cold Steel Heart, um, Amulet of, or I'm sorry, Avenger of Zendikar, and Sensei's Divining Top. Joe has to decide what he's least likely to be able to beat. That's a sea of small sapperlings. Elementals, or, no, plants, I think, right, on Avenger, yeah. Circle of Protection, single creature nut. COP every plant. He'll have to chump block the front here. Could feasibly go to one. Seems risky. And Joe does, in fact, drop to one here. Joe does have a sword in his deck. So he may fire and ice, I do believe. So maybe he's just looking to, yep, there's a pick one, pack one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. A little, one extra click, changing the life totals. As we see Brad in what is likely his uh, post-combat main phase from the previous attack here. I think he's been in the tank since then. Have one point of damage left to deal. And a Vorapede on his side to help him get there. <clears throat> No, Joe has Hero of Blade Hold and Oblivion Ring in his hand. I'm not sure what else. Venser. And Joe can't get there. I don't think he must not have had the O Ring there, yeah. Thrun, Thrun certainly gets there that game. Very strong card in the matchup for sure. Can't be countered. Hexproof. Can't be countered. Can't be killed outside of combat. And that's not where blue-white does its best work. So, game one to Brad Mendez. Your uh, player's champion, or your, your viewer's choice champion. This is the man that you guys voted in. Uh, on the stream here today 
making his way towards the finals. Again, this is all for $1,000 store credit at GameCoreOnline.com. Uh, this event is being held in Wesleyville, Pennsylvania. This cube draft, if you're just joining us, invitation only. Uh, we at GameCore have run a season-long uh, series of events here. There was a limited open, a legacy open, a standard open, uh, and the winner from each of these events, uh, each of the biggest events this season here at GameCore, were invited to come back for the eight-man Win a Grand Cube draft. Uh, Shane Kelly, who we watched draft the initial deck, was uh, last season's champion. This season's champion was decided earlier today. Uh, that was the man in the uh, who lost in the first round here today, Bob Martin. So congratulations to him. Uh, he has uh, earned his chance into this draft as well, uh, as I believe he gets uh, some buys next next season, depending on the structure of the tournament. Uh, oftentimes uh, the champion has a little extra bonus um, for Shane's sake. Uh, you know, he queued twice uh, for this event by winning two of the events, as well as being last year's champion. So, uh, we wanted to make sure he was the guy you guys got to watch. He's he's a, a very strong player, uh, quality representative of the kind of play that you can see when you watch Magic on our stream here, uh, especially into the later rounds, is that you know all the more competitive players and decks kind of float to the top. Uh, you can count on uh, some good Magic from uh, Mr. Kelly any time you get to see him play. Uh, Never an opponent I like to see across from me if I'm in a competitive mindset. We're going to head into game two here uh, with Joe Warren down a game to Brad Mendez. Brad has a, a bug mana ramp deck here. I, I, we haven't seen a whole lot of his top end, I've got to say. Um, for the most part, though, uh, you know, his, his mid-range is great. If he can stick a throne against Joe's blue-white control deck, there's not a whole lot here that Joe can do to stop him. As we saw in that last game, you know, upheaval was his only answer, and Brad just laid out an exploration and out mana ramped him once again. Brad's gonna give us one more pile shuffle here. Thousand dollars on the line. Mana problems aren't really what you want to drop to. Looks a little twitchy here. Uh, both Joe and Brad were. Um, Joe came in third place here in the championship event today. Uh, that's what actually earned his spot in this eight-man win grand because of Shane's double Q. Uh, we took the two highest seated uncued players from the championship event, and that meant that uh, first place Bob Kelly and third place Joe Warren made it in, and second place was Mike Cruz today. Uh, those players each won uh, a mox already. So uh, they both picked up a piece of Power 9 today, and they're fighting for the chance to buy a whole bunch more with their $1,000 uh, store credit prize. Again, the website that they can redeem that store credit, GameCoreOnline.com. If you guys have not checked it out, please do so. John is always looking for the next avenue to hook you guys up with free stuff. We have, uh, I'm going to, at the end of this game, announce the winner of a box of Modern Masters that was given away on the web page and Facebook page. If you go to the Facebook page, there's a giveaways tab. You'll see that the contest is now closed, but you'll also know that that's exactly where you need to go to check for the contest as soon as the event is over today, or I'm sorry, tomorrow morning when you wake up. The new contest will be up and, and we'll be giving something else away, so make sure you guys enter there. You can also find that right on the homepage of GameCoreOnline.com. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a, a blue box. A lot of exciting things are going to be happening here at GameCore. Uh, we have a full featured website that will be launching. Uh, this is kind of our temporary placement um, website while the, the full one gets implemented and designed uh, by the pros. and. Uh, it's, it'll be really interesting to see exactly how we're able to, um, you know, find new ways to bring you guys cool stuff. I'm, I'm personally going to be uh, responsible for the content on the website, 
So any ideas you have, things you want to read, if you want to write for our website, shoot me an email, GameCoreWritersHQ at gmail.com. Uh, let me know you, you were watching on the live stream. Really love to do some magic writing. Uh, and come to me with an idea, please. Come to me. Tell me what you want to write because I want you to be passionate about anything you're going to write for us. Uh, that's how you, we'll get the best writing from you. Uh, I'm a fairly experienced blogger. I've done some uh, work in the fantasy football realm uh, for a few years now. And I've started to write Inside Magic. You can see the things uh, that I've written thus far for the site on uh, the web page. Scroll down to the bottom. Click the news link. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to get on board and, and start helping produce some content for us, always much appreciated. We've had uh, three submission articles so far make it onto the website. Three of them have been submitted. I'm very eager to work with new writers who want to get better. So you just go ahead and let me know anything I can do to help. And Vendillion Click will move Trigon Predator to the bottom of Brad's deck, replace it with a land draw. I'm sorry, a card draw. And uh, looks like he did hit the land. And couldn't tell you what the card was there that Brad just uh, flipped over a Sakura Tribelder with. But nonetheless, the Sakura Tribelder sticks and resolves. And Brad's going to be able to ramp his mana with it at the end of the turn. But not before he takes three in the air. Okay, Shardless Agent, thank you. Oh, sorry about the life totals there. Forget to hit refresh one more time sometimes. 19 to 17 is where we're at now. I should watch a few more legacy streams so I can pick up on some of these cards from time to time. Judging by the success and popularity of this tournament, I can almost guarantee you that cube drafts are going to become more popular here at GameCore. Uh, so maybe just by virtue of that alone, I'll learn all these nifty cube cards. If you have any questions about cube, if you're thinking about building one of your own, uh, anything along those lines, uh, here at GameCore, we're using the cube of a, a very, very uh, smart and gifted cube uh, artist, I'll say. Uh, absolutely loves the, uh, the format. Uh, as so many people do, uh, and he's always talking about it, always immersed in it. His name is Jonathan Richmond. If you know him, you'll know him as Whooper. And uh, at Norbert88 on Twitter, uh, always hobnobbing with some of the big guys, actually. Uh, big time in us over here in Erie a little bit sometimes, but uh, nonetheless a great guy. Uh, thank you very much uh, if you're watching this later, John, for letting us use your cube today. I do believe it is his. Um, not 100% positive on that, but 1611 are the life totals here of the agent and the Sakura Tribelder turning sideways in the red zone as our Flicker Wisp and uh, Vendillion click. So Mr. Warren with his Sword of Fire Nice in his hand too may as well just be playing some Modern Masters today. Sword Sticks. Looks like Brad might have... Uh, was that a Morphling? Would that be true? Mm -hmm. I sure don't think that's what it is. Must have saw, seen it run. But regardless, we're going to sacrifice the Sakura Tribe Elder. And finish updating your life totals. There you go. Do apologize, folks. We got the stream kicked off roughly 12 hours and 10 minutes ago. I've been with you guys for every round, every minute, and I'm getting a little bit tired here. But i got to say, uh, this is an exciting draft here to watch. Um, I'm through a wall of the other guys. Uh, everybody else, you know, all day I've had people back here. Everybody likes to hang out in the booth. Um, I feel like a, you know a part of the broadcast, and so many people are a part of the broadcast. I will be, uh, you know, thanking some of the guys later on before we get going, assuming I'm awake enough to remember to do so. And if I don't know, guys, that I meant it. Um, everybody that helped out today was tremendous. I think it was an incredibly successful stream event today. Uh, as we see an attack here by Brad, 
now he's got a sword to deal with. So 14 to 11 are the life totals. That's going to change pretty quick here. I think Brad might be down to one. Right now, life totals are 14 to 11 before this combat. We'll see where they end up afterwards. Uh, there's a sword trigger that's got two damage to throw around that might leave Brad a little less. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Colorado. There was some talk about whether or not we'd power the cube, and at the end of the day, the decision was so split. Uh, we we were trying to incorporate a great live stream event. People love to see Power 9 get thrown around. We gave away five pieces of Power 9 in the prizes earlier today, and we decided that we were just moving all in on uh, some of the coolest things you can do in Magic. We've seen turn two Signets feeding uh, turn three, or I'm sorry, turn four or whatever. Uh, crazy, crazy early stuff. Uh, worm Coil Engines. We saw a turn two... Uh, Kokoshu in round one. All right, 14 to 3 is life totals here now. As I suspected, the sword trigger uh, went and took down the shardless agent. My apologies for that again. Sometimes that little box just disappears and I can't hit the button in, in time. We see the Avenger of Zendikar add uh, quite a hefty presence to the board. And it looks like we're going to see it get into the Royald. I think there was kicker paid. Uh, condescend for... Was it one? Chip both cards to the bottom with his scry. Knock the top of his deck and hope it's an out. Otherwise, him and Joe are going to head into a game three here. These cube matches have not been for the faint of heart. These players, are all of them want this so bad. Um, you know, Brad being the uh, viewer's choice entrant into the event today, uh, you know, is the one player here that... Uh, Maybe, you know, hasn't been playing Magic all day. Shane Kelly actually did not play in the main event today. Um, rested up, showed up ready and, and raring to go to try to take down a, a $1,000 cube draft. Um, so far, so good after round one. I have not gotten an update for him yet. Uh, Brad looks like he's just about dead here. I think he's just making Joe do it. Yep, and moving on to game three. <sighs> I don't know if I'm glad I didn't get to play in this today or not, but I don't know if I could have could have handled the pressure. So uh, another great match here. Going to move into game three. Brad's going to be on the play. We'll have to see exactly how much mana ramping he can do in this one. Uh, it's going to take a, a quick second to stretch my legs here a little bit. Uh, get myself awake and ready to be a little more on the spot with the life totals. I'm not going anywhere. We're going to watch these guys shuffle up. It's just going to be a little quiet for a minute or two. I do apologize. Uh, been on been on with you guys for over 12 hours today. Starting to, to get a little tired. So uh, we will be right back in just a minute here.
All right, I am back, and everybody has promised. I said at the end of that game I would give you guys the winner of your Modern Masters uh, booster box um, that was raffled off on the website and the Facebook page for the last couple of weeks here leading up to this event. Uh, no more suspense. Congratulations, Dana Moore. Won via a Twitter submission uh, that was confirmed by Mr. Gapinski here. So, uh, Dana, if you're listening now, go ahead and shoot us a Facebook message. Uh, we're we're going to try and shoot you an email later, uh, get a hold of you however we can to uh, make sure we get that prize out to you. Uh, so go ahead and, and feel free to just give the store a call or initiate the contact if, if you hear about it um, this way. And, and we'll uh, since you won on Twitter, we'll make sure we get an email out to you and, and uh, tweet if we can't find you that way. So congratulations again. And let's turn our attention back to the Cube Draft. Fetchland starts off the game here for Joe. And we see Joe drop down to 19 off of his fetch. And Brad commits a spell skite to the board. And a turn. What was that, like humility and stuff? A turn one exploration. Or not a turn one exploration, a one man exploration here. Uh, we'll give Brad the ability to play an extra land every turn. And. Joe's going to suspend the Ancestral Visions again. Reminiscent of Game 1, at least by virtue of the Ancestral Visions. And I think we had a quick turn passage here. Joe may have missed to remove a suspend counter. Uh, looks like it will count as a missed trigger. Uh, warning will be given. Counter will remain. It's now a five turn wait for that Ancestral Visions to draw some cards. Assuming Brad missed his land drop here, it's likely okay for Joe. Detention sphere in his hand is certainly hindered by the presence of spell skites. So you have to wonder if maybe he just slams it to get rid of it now. Exploration doesn't seem that good right now. Joe gets Brad with a gotcha play. Just flickers out a exploration real quick. Does just about nothing. By that I mean exactly nothing. Brad made a move to tap all of his mana. See what Brad wanted to do with that four land. Oracle of Moldiah is a good start when you need some lands. 
Thrun's on top of his deck. That's actually a terrible draw because he's only got one green mana. But with Oracle, as long as there's a, a forest underneath, he might just be okay. Tectonic Edge is already assembled in case Maze of Vith requires it. So thank you to the new group of, uh, of viewers here that joined us. If you don't know, uh, maybe don't didn't uh, catch it all from the title, uh, we are giving away $1,000 to the winner of this single elimination uh, cube draft. We are looking at, my apologies, game three. It's tied up one-to-one. -one. Uh, this is the second round, so... Uh, do we have an update on who the f other finalist will be? Uh, I think they're still okay, it looks like the other match is still going on as well. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is the wrap-up event. It's an invitation-only cube draft. These players earned their right to uh, enter into this through their performance during the Game Core Championship Series events throughout Season 2, or throughout Season 3. Uh, Brad actually won his entry through uh, a vote here on the Twitch chat. Um, he was requested as the, uh, the people's champion more than anybody else. Uh, so he was given his spot based off of that. And he's certainly doing his best to make the most of it now. Uh, Counterspell on top of his deck means he still can't cast that Thrun. He is looking to make a move with Tectonic Edge, take down the Maze of If. And he's going to get some, an attack in here with the Oracle of Moldaya. Game three advantage, Shane Kelly. Not much, but... Okay, and the other match is in game three. It looks like Shane has a slight advantage. Nothing to write home about. Um, but he is the player that we watched head through the entire uh, draft footage. And Sphinx Revelation for Joe Warren gets condescended by Brad Mendez here. Joe's getting ever so slightly closer to Ancestral Visions resolving. He will attack for three with the Flicker Wisp. Making life totals 19 to 14. Yeah, Joe's Looks like he's hopefully going to remember the Ancestral Visions counters now. There's been a couple missed there. $1,000 at stake. Hopefully he can right the ship. I'm sure he'd like to draw as many cards as possible. And uh, Joe's Detention Sphere is looking like it's going to be taking Spell Skite here. Absolutely. I will send you the cube list right now. We've been posting it a couple of times here. But there you go. asking our opinion I don't think there's a timing issue I think Brad if it was time and he didn't make any verbal declaration uh, I think he should be okay on that detention sphere if he made no declaration I mean that nothing seemed inherent that he was you know I, 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 I I'll definitely let the I, I level two make the call here, but I mean, based on what <coughs> you should, I mean, no get to hear a little bit on a, a judge's meeting. I don't know how well you can hear them, okay. but what was the final ruling there, Blake? Just moved a card. 
Yeah, and it didn't even look good, gratuitous on camera. I can move cards all I want. It doesn't mean anything. Right. They didn't move that far along. Like. No, it was it was pretty quick. He should he should get the the spell guide for sure. We want them to be playing their their time, but we want them to be like, well, it took you three seconds. It's all right. We, Mm-hmm. Yeah, be a level two. <laughs> Judge uh, Blaine Campbell in the house. I don't know if anybody was watching the Grand Prix Vegas footage, uh, but when they did the, uh, you should try going to a Grand Prix video, uh, and they do the Ask a Judge section, Judge Blaine is the first judge that shows up there. Want to know how the rules interact in the game that you're playing? Ask a judge, and there's there's Judge Blaine, the in-house level two here at GameCore. Headed out to a Grand Prix Oakland coming up pretty soon. That's the next event I know for sure he'll be at. Feels like anywhere and everywhere they accept him for judging, he's there. So it looks like we're having a conversation about declaration, and it, I think John's saying that even doing that wouldn't constitute concession that it's resolved. I mean, he's just, you know, in a way, could be visualizing the ability to see what happens. Um, I have to imagine that the detention sphere will end up on the spell skite. So. We will you want me to put it up to a wait and see how it <laughs> players are just each talking through the events as you know as they remember them unfolding to the judge to make sure that the correct um, the correct resolution is is what occurs here. he just lose the game if this doesn't happen like I just don't see how that's happening right? okay well it's resolved everybody is in uh, full understanding of, of what happened now I'm sure you want me to like get on and explain the situation over here? Yeah. yeah these guys have been moving along pretty quick here they've been playing since you know, 10:45 this morning. So everybody is, at the same time, looking to looking to go home, but looking to looking to take home a thousand dollars with them. So, um, not exactly sure what's what's going on, um, what the conversation is now either. But um, hopefully, we we get a chance to uh, interact more with each other than the judges pretty soon. Okay, so it, just a, a revealed card issue here. Um, there's an extra card shown or something along those lines. <laughs> All right, Sensei's dividing tap is... Resolving, the ability is going. And we look to be back to some magic here. Thank you guys for sticking around with us. We've got the end of this game and one more game to go to decide who's going to take home $1,000 of store credit here from GameCore. Hey, Online.com. If they get it up to 100 viewers... I'll give away another pack of 
And uh, if you guys can, as we, I notice we've got still a, a little bit of a growing um, number of streamers here. If we can get up to 100 people, I can definitely get John to, to do a giveaway here, um, give away a little Modern Masters product. So go ahead and uh, head over to Facebook and uh, hit the share button and uh, Twitter, Reddit, whatever, wherever you want to you know, reach your friends, wherever you're talking about magic. Head over there, let people know what's going on about the high stakes cube going on in Pennsylvania. A crazy shop owner who's gave away three thousand dollars worth of prizes earlier today hasn't had enough, going for four thousand and fifteen to seven now are the life totals. They changed a few times there. Let them catch up to each other. go thank you all for tuning in uh, if you take a look at the channel tomorrow you'll see that we had a uh, standard event uh, that we streamed start to finish uh, five rounds of Swiss and a top eight uh, so if you're interested in, in constructed standard magic as well make sure you give that a, a quick peek Rook Relentless here for Brad. As he fights a Flicker Wisp. Oracle attacks Venser. It is Venser the Sojourner. I know the glare is a little rough over there. <clears throat> Looks like a Sun Titan there in Joe's hand. He drew... Upheaval. Doesn't have the mana to cast it. Doesn't want to have the mana to cast it. Brad definitely has some nice synergies over there. Sensei's Divining Top. Digging around his deck, looking for all the lands. He can play three of them a turn if he can draw them. Unfortunately, he really hasn't done much extra as far as land is concerned. And that looks like a Marshall coup here from Joe. Top village for the turn for Brad, and he sticks Thrun, which he's he's had in hand for quite some time. It's the game one path of victory here for Brad uh, might prove to be a little too late. Was drawing four cards this turn thanks to his ancestral visions resolving. It should have resolved quite some time ago due to some missed triggers, but I think he drew the sword on the last card he drew this turn. So, uh, Hero of Bladehold also in Joe's hand. Really interesting. And I just got word Shane Kelly took his match, and he's going to be moving into the finals against the winner of this game here, Joe Warren versus Brad Mendez. Um, here's the sword. Do these Marshall Coop tokens fly, John? No. No? So, got some ground guys he's got to push through here. Sword's not really going to help him do it. I don't get this attack necessarily from Joe. I mean, it does push a little damage through, which is in plenty of ways very, very good for him. Can't, 
to it. Joe takes it down then? Joe wins. All right.